What were they thinking? I'm well, not in the mood to drown We should be today. fine. We should be fine. The winners win, you know? It costs money to actually sign up for a tournament. I, don't, I could never live in the city, though. I think I would die. What's up, guys? Welcome back to We Don't Know What This Podcast Is Called with Alex <laughs> Perrick and Sydney Wells. We're back on Lake Michigan, but this time in Chicago. Well, we're going to the river right now. We have one of the greatest sceneries behind us. We can see the Chicago skyline. We're about to go enter the Chicago lock. We timed this perfectly so this big boat would wake, knock over my mic, and um, <laughs> we've got electrical tape taping my mic because I forgot my other stand, so... Amateur. The amateur hour on the Sydney Wells and Alex Barrick podcast. Yes. So today is going to be exciting. We're putting some line in the water, hopefully catching, what, rock bass, maybe smallmouth. I don't know. We're not going to be fishing too hard today. Today is more just about the pod, seeing the Chicago skyline. This is my first time on the river and actually being on a boat going through the city, which I'm really excited, as you can tell. What does that light say? Green. So that means go. So we are going to go. Oh, I probably should bring this line up. Right? We should probably reel us in. <laughs> Intermission. No, we'll keep it going because it's going to be funny how this is per, uh, perceived through the lock masters. So what a lock is, is since the Chicago River is lower than Lake Michigan, so you kind of go in there, uh, the locks close, the water drops, and then you go into the Chicago River. We thought this would be a cool, cool idea to film the podcast starting here, going into the river, and uh, who knows, there's carp, there's largemouth, there's smallmouth. There's salmon. There's all sorts of stuff that live in the Chicago River. And uh, here we go. It's probably a little chilly, though, so a lot of the fish are going to be deeper. Yeah. Well, the salmon run, do the salmon start to get closer to shallower water? So the, the interesting about thing about salmon is they get stocked in a river. Yeah. And then they go in the lake for four years, and they come back to the same river they're stocked in. There's okay. no stocking down here, but somehow salmon get kind of lost. They Some of them don't make it home, and they end up, you know, trying to swim up the Chicago River or get stuck in some of the harbors here. Okay. And you, you catch them. But this is the time of year. It's last week in September, first two weeks in October. And you were just up in Wisconsin? Yep. Catching them. Also, if I sound a little stuffy, it's because I have a sinus infection. I've been hunting outside this past week because opening day of deer season was October 1st this past Saturday. Just an FYI. <laughs> Did we miss the green beans go? No, we're still good. I don't know anything about this. This is my first time doing this because I'm confused because does it look like we can get past this? You're going to see what happens. We're going to grab these ropes and this water's going to drop. And we're still going to be in the boat because the river's lower than the lake. Oh. Do you want me to hold it? I can hold a rope. rope. Do you want me to get in the front? You might have to. We're going to see how this works. All right. Well, let me just do it. I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'm well, not in the mood to drown We should be today. fine. We should be fine. Oh, gosh. Are you sure? Yep. We've made it. We are now in the lock. And they got really quiet. I know. Oh my gosh, look at these Canadian geese. Canada geese. This is hilarious. These guys survived early season. Is it closing? Oh yeah, see? Okay, so now behind us, look it. Uh, have you ever been in a lock before? No, this is my first time in a lock. I think, yeah. I'm pretty sure this is the first time. I don't know where I would be in a lock. I don't mean, isn't it, is it typically in bigger Mi cities? Mississippi River has a bunch of locks, like, going down. Um, no, I have never been in one. It's my first time. This is a podcast. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, right now I'm getting a little anxious. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a fast fishing boat getting ready to go downtown Chicago. <laughs> You've done this one other time. You did get on a big swan float one time, right? Oh, yeah, I did do that. And then you got in trouble? Oh, no, you didn't get in trouble. They just, like... They thought it was hilarious. They yeah, thought like, it was funny. what are you funny. doing? Barstool reposted it, too, which is funny. Me and my buddy Matt, shout-out to Matt Drob, uh, we took a swan float, and we went down the Chicago River. <gasps> Sorry, I was trying to help you. Me and Matt, we decided to... <laughs> <laughs> we decided to take a swan, a blow-up swan from Walmart, and float down the river, because legally, you're allowed to kayak, you're allowed to canoe, and we had a paddle, we wore life jackets, we did it all, and the police came up to us. At the end, we were just like, 
get out of the river. Like, what are you guys doing? But they all were laughing. They thought it was hilarious. And they drove us back to our car. We were like, oh, you could just put us off on the shore. But no, he drove us back to our car. And uh, yeah, so. Yeah, probably to make sure that you guys actually were leaving. <laughs> You're like, okay, these guys are going to get off and get right back in. So it's Tuesday, October 4th. This past weekend was a crazy weekend for the fishing community. Two walleye fishermen got in trouble at a actual tournament, professional walleye fishermen to be exact. They put lead weights the size of eggs inside walleye. So they like, probably pushed it through the mouth, pushed it through the stomach. And there also was walleye fillets in the walleye. Wasn't that insane? Did you see that part, that there yep. was actually flays in the stomach? I just want to say, just remember, winners win. We got weights and fish! There we go! Oh, 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 get the fuck out of here! The winners win, you know? You got you got to do what you got to do. Winners are going to win. There's a, there's a video, a Facebook clip of them. Maybe we could play it up here. It's like winners win. And I was dying when I saw that. Yeah, you said that to me. And I never saw that before until yesterday when you said it to me. What an idiot. Lunatic. Dumbass. Okay. Oh, sh sure, all of that. But I heard that they won. That, like, the second weight was 22 pounds. And they weighed in 38 pounds. Yeah. So why did they even cheat? I don't know. Well, maybe, I don't know. They, well, obviously they probably, no, you know they cheated prior, so they didn't know what was going to be in second place. Yeah, So yeah. They, they, they were on the boat, I'm guessing, on the boat and shoved the weights down the throat and everything else. It made no sense to me how ridiculous it was. Like, there's a difference. I mean, don't get me wrong, a lot of fish, especially walleye and bass or whatever, will eat a bunch of little weights, like little weights from lures or little, You'll also you'll find lure Reminisce in a stomach of a fish, but that was just obviously absurd. Like they were like this big Eight in a pounds. walleye. Why not just do four? I'm not trying to say you should cheat. No, okay? don't cheat. I'm just, I'm just playing. Like, what were they thinking? Like, why not just do a little bit of weight? And why was it that risky? Why are you risking that much for that tournament? That's crazy. I don't know. And they, they are so cocky about it, which was beyond me that video is so cocky so cocky. And, okay so after reading articles on it because i was doing a little bit of uh, research a lot of people already thought that they were cheating in past tournaments because they've won so many tournaments and a lot of money and a lot of like a boat obviously in tournaments you win a lot of free stuff too yeah they won a boat did you hear about this they won a boat had to take a polygraph failed the polygraph and then their lawyers got them out of it yeah then they they took the boat back and then they sued the tournament then they sued the tournament trail to get the boat back. <laughs> I, I just can't believe they were still allowed to fish tournaments after all that. How they didn't get caught. And they've had that many... <laughs> Our boat is getting we destroyed. We are going <laughs> to sink in the Chicago River. They've had so many close calls. And then they do that. Yeah, just at this point, if you're, you cheated all that time, just play fair. Play fair at that point. You won so many tournaments, made a name for yourself. Yeah. So yeah, maybe people think you cheated. Maybe you did cheat. Maybe you didn't. I you don't didn't know. You didn't get caught. You Was didn't get caught. Yeah. So just move on from that and play fair. Like they literally used the oldest trick in the book is putting lead in a fish's stomach. Like everybody, you would hear people joke about it. Oh, did you put weight in the stomach? But I don't think anybody was ever dumb enough to actually do it, especially that big. Anybody who fishes, bass, walleye, muskie, whatever, you know, you're an expert in, People are going to notice when there's a fish that somebody holds up. If it's, they say it's, for example, a 15 pound bass and it's really like a nine pound bass or a six pound bass. You know what I mean? You're going to know. Yeah. Like the people who were at that tournament, even in the video, you can say like, no, they, people say no way. No way that's the way. Like the audience in the back, because they're fellow professional anglers, they know what the walleye would have weighed. And if you're going to stretch a lie that big, it's going to be so blatantly obvious. Makes no sense to me. Like they didn't try to cheat by like a pound or two. You yeah, know what I like, mean? yeah. You hold up a twenty-inch walleye; it's gonna weigh at max four pounds. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it weighs six or seven pounds. You're like, that's impossible. Yeah, yeah. I saw on uh, articles. There's a good analogy where they're like, you see a physically fit person, and that person say they weigh weigh five hundred pounds, when you know this person weighs. 180 or something like that like yeah. that's that's a big stretch for people who don't really know a lot about fishing that's a good analogy where you're like this person is very fit they're saying that they weigh 
a certain amount or that they'd be a lot bigger body positivity here walleye positivity but yeah i don't know that was insane that was a crazy video and especially reading that they got caught before and then they continued to i would be shitting my pants if i cheated on something if i cheated i would not be able to sleep at night i would turn myself in 100 sure. percent. so those guys getting getting caught before and getting away with it and then continuing to do it is crazy and then I thought it was interesting. So a lot of people were actually asking me, even in the Chicago office, was like, how do they? How could they tell that they cheated? One, we just talked about how when you're a professional, you know typically what a size of a fish is going to be. Okay? So that's one way. But the director actually felt the weight in the stomach when holding up the fish. Yeah. So it felt like it was a big rock. And, and he, he of- was very, um, he was like suspicious like he yeah. knew that they had cheated in the or that there was suspicion of them cheating in the past so he was like checking and being more thoroughly with his investigation yeah and then obviously feeling that and that's a, like that's the thing with the with the stomach it hangs on the bottom part of the belly and when you hold a fish typically you're holding where the stomach would lay yeah you can easily feel it i mean think about it you're holding a fish that's like how big the walleye like this big you think you hold a walleye it's not you can obviously tell but yeah, that was crazy. It went viral, uber viral. Yeah, one more thing I wanted to mention was holy insanity. Like, I I don't I'm trying to get off TikTok, but I was on TikTok that Saturday. Like, I don't want to promote TikTok, but I was on there and then like every other I swear it was like fifteen different ones were yeah. on my for you page. Facebook, all over the place. I had people who don't even fish sending me messages. Hey, did you hear about this? What do you think of this? Yeah. I, uh, TMZ picked it up. Did they? Yeah. I didn't even, I was fishing. So I was fishing all day. I wasn't really on my phone. I was, we were recording for another episode and I got on my phone and then a lot of people, Billy Football already blogged it and tweeted about it. And so of course I jumped on that as well. I don't know. I think it's just going to change so many different regulations also in the fishing community in different tournaments. I, this is a question. I don't fish obviously those kind of things. I do both, both fishing tournaments. Do for walleye tournaments, do they just uh, like kill the walleye? Is it different than a bass fishing tournament? Um, a lot of the times those walleye tournaments are kill. And this is also another thing I heard, which is funny you mentioned this, but it's kill and then donate. The reason why they do that on uh, Lake Erie and some other lakes sometimes is because they catch the fish from so deep that they're really not going to release. Um, and if you bring them in a way, and walleyes are not like bass. Like yeah. bass could live in a sewer. A walleye needs current. They need clean water. Like it's hard to raise walleyes. Okay. So th- that tournament was kill and donate. There was a video on Facebook. I don't know if you could find it, but they, they were notorious for not donating their fish. Okay. Everybody in the in the field would donate to charity. Okay. And these guys would take it home. Oh, okay. And then he was joking with some guy in the car. I don't know if this. So is these true. guys are just assholes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, because they, they were cheating. They had lead weight, so they didn't want to donate the fish. Oh, lead yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they were being smart in that sense. Yeah, yeah. But I guess supposedly he was he was telling his... I don't know if there's a video of this. My friend was telling me, so it seems very specific. I didn't see the video, so don't quote me on this. But I guess he was saying, like, oh, I, I need to bring uh, I need to bring some walleye fillets. He told somebody at the tournament, I need to bring some walleye fillets home to my girlfriend. And the guy's like, don't you have a wife? He's like, yeah, but I got a girlfriend, too. Oh, gosh, well, they're just scuzzy. <laughs> they're just scuzzy. No, I, I am just surprised that on those kind of tournaments, they don't do, like, I guess they do polygraphs, and obviously if you fail polygraph, you're good to go. Um, but, like, an x-ray system or something where you would, like, look in, or just cut them open every time. I think now they're going to have some sort of, like, lead, like, it's a it's a piece of metal, right? So you could just scan them with a, yeah. with a scanner. And yeah, there. I'm surprised they didn't do anything like that in the past, or already. Now they definitely will. Regulations are going to be tougher. And... I, I like feel for those other professionals that were actually with like there and they're pissed off and yelling like some people are like probably wondering if they're not a fisherman or have never done tournaments why are these people so angry one they're obviously losing out money but two like it costs money to actually sign up for a tournament like this tournament tournament specifically I think it was like $400 um, a pair to compete so they're losing out on money already and then they're losing out on more money when people are cheating and winning the big the big prize Oh, they'll definitely lose sponsorships over this too. All their sponsorships. I don't think there's any company that will will still no, sponsor no. them after this. No, like I mean, and your anybody's contract with a sponsorship. Yeah. It's like if you are like breaking a law or breaking rules or doing something that's going to damper the sponsor's name, they're dropping them like that. They're all they're done for. I don't think they'll ever compete in another tournament ever. Yeah, there's no way they are allowed to fish any tournaments. There's no way they ha- the sponsors keep them or they get sponsors. There's no way they make any money in the fishing industry anymore. I'm really curious. I don't know a lot about tournaments, but one, it's going to be an, almost impossible to investigate past winnings from these guys. Like, you have no proof at this point. Like, 
you can believe or think uh, that they cheated, which I'm sure a lot of people do, but you don't have any proof to actually sue them or get them in trouble for anything. But for this particular tournament, I'm guessing that they're going to be, I don't know, legal action will be upon them? What do you think? I've heard that, like, since it's, you know, they stole people's money. Yeah. So, I don't know. I've heard it's a felony if you steal. <laughs> yeah. So, I I don't know if, like... Straight but, face. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that, yes, somebody's going to prosecute them. I think the tournament trail is going to sue them. And I feel like every single person that competed in that tournament tactically could sue them well, too. Well, during registration, you're probably signing some things too. Yeah. Like any pre-registration, when I do bow fishing tournaments, we go to like one day's registration where you pay your fee. You usually sign some kind of form, which I'm probably guessing that says in there, do not cheat. It's just really interesting to me. Now a lot of eyeballs are on fishing tournaments, which might be a good thing too. Also might scare the living hell out of people who are cheating because I know there's a lot of other forms of cheating. I've read all these articles where I'm like, holy crap, people like s- will scuba dive and like cheat that way. I don't know. I've, I've heard a way to do it. Um, let's just promote all these different ways to cheat. I think the, <laughs> the best one I've ever heard, obviously I've never done this. I swear to God I've never done this. <laughs> but you take you get a bass like the day before and then you put four pound tests, like you hook them up with four to five pound, six pound test, put them in the lip and then you run a line off the dock and then you take a crankbait and you cast a crankbait, and then once you hit the, you'll hit the line, and then you have the line slide down the line, and then you set the hook. You use like 12 pound on your crankbait, so when you set the hook, it breaks off the dock. The crankbait goes in the side of the fish's mouth, and then it looks like you've caught it. So you're snagging the fish, or yeah, well you place it there the day or the two days or three days before the tournament. Well, I'm saying when you use a crankbait and you're reeling in, are you trying to snag the bass, or are you just trying to have the bass actually? Ca- like, no, the, it's not eating it because it's it's hooked up to a dock. Okay, like so this. you're like snagging the bass yeah. pretty much, which is also illegal. Yeah, but it looks like it's in the side of the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I saw in an article that people were like having a buddy at a dock. You scuba dive. I don't know. You place a fish on the... I mean, that seems like too much work to actually even compete in a tournament at that point. I would have an aneurysm. I would die in my sleep thinking about it. Yeah. But, no, there's so many different ways, and I think definitely putting weights in the stomach of a fish is just the... the wrong way to do it. Wrong way to do it. I think that's ridiculous. You, they even filleted a, they, the, they a fish. Oh, wait, wait. Did you hear there was a, a pair of pliers in there, too? No, I didn't. There was lead weights. Is that true? Fish fillets, and pl- I don't know. People are extending the there, truth. There was so much I going I think they're on. just... Because in the video, they, like, pull out just weights uh, comment and a below, fillet. Comment below if there was pliers in the fish's mouth. I heard it. That's crazy. That's just insane. We're going to have to make a move because we have a boat coming up on us. But behind us, we have Lakeshore Drive, the beautiful Chicago skyline. If there was ever a place to do a podcast all the time, it would be right here. Are we just going to let... Crazy. We'll Uh, let the boat boat just go by us. Okay. All right, we're good. But yeah, I've I've always uh, loved the city so much, even though the fishing is not so great. It just puts a smile on my face to see it. It's crazy architecture, the third biggest city in the United States. and uh, Just puts a smile on your face? Puts a smile on my face. Even though I grew up 15 miles north of here, I still call this city my home. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. No, this is really cool. This is pretty. Where we're walking here, we walked on Lakeshore Drive for yep. the, my first time here in the city with Alex to catch smallmouth. I'm going to turn us. We're going to head more into the river. I'm going to fish a spot that I know there's some smallies and some rock bass and maybe even some largies that hang out. And then, uh, yeah, you'll get to see the city. The city. Even though I've walked the city. <laughs> I've been over here on foot. I don't. I could never live in the city, though. Could you imagine living in one of these big skyscrapers? Scra- scra- blah, 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 blah. These big skyscrapers? When I was younger. I think I would die. I never could see myself. Now I always say I could do it. Just you be- could do it? I don't I know. I guess, like... Where would you put your boat? Like, I wouldn't keep my boat down here. I would just have it for the city life. Like, there's something about how hustle and bustle the Chicago life is. You wake up, there's always something to do. There's always people. There's always a bar open, you know. Yeah, but you don't have, like, a yard. Like, your dogs. I, like, feel bad for dogs that live in the city. Honestly. Like, did you you see the 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 dog at the park today? I mean, yes, that owner was a great owner. But, like, think about it. The dog probably is, like, I cannot wait every day to go catch a ball outside because even when I let out or I'm on a walk I don't see grass I if you have a big dog 
I don't know if you should have them in the city, but luckily I don't have a big dog. So. Yeah, that's going to be a different topic. Um, so our first uh, podcast actually went well. If you haven't seen it, make sure you go back to our YouTube, scroll through a couple videos, and you'll find Alex and I talking for the first time. We were on Lake Michigan actually catching uh, trout, lake trout, which was really fun. And then we also asked in the comments what you guys wanted to know. And a good question was people were curious about frostbite. Check this view out, guys. This is actually beautiful. And now I like this view too of myself, so now I can see what I actually look like on camera. And it's not well, but it's okay. Wow. This is pretty. This is pretty, Alex. That's all you gotta say? Nothing? Just soaking in the beauty. <laughs> soaking it up. So before we go into frostbite, first I want to show everybody my cool sweatshirt that I have here that I'm not wearing because I'm wearing another Barstool Sports caught off sweatshirt. All right, we have a lot of cool designs this year at Barstool Outdoors. So if you want to get your own sweatshirt, shirt, or whatever you're really feeling, go to store.barstoolsports.com and snag one of these bad boys. All right, let's get into it. So frostbite, it's your ice fishing lure company. Just lures, correct? Lures. So soft plastics? Rods. Oh, you got rods too. Ice fishing rods. Is uh, this um, part of frostbite, your indostructo bug? Yep, yep. We caught smallies on this. Yep, it's a great smallmouth bait. Um, it's also good, really good for ice fishing too. And um, See the water? Yeah. That's cool. Put that in slow motion. I started in 2018. There was originally five or six people that started the company with me. And then over time, uh, slowly bought them out. And now it's just me and my friend, and the president too. He uh, he is a new owner of the company, and we're bringing on maybe another two owners. If you two are watching this, you guys know who you are. But it's a it's a small company where 95% of the work that takes place is in Canada. Okay. But we sell to U.S. We sell in Canada, and it, we've got a whole assortment of lures from jigging spoons to jigs that are coming out to plastics to rods to a new reel we're launching this winter. And uh, yeah, we just wanted to create affordable ice fishing tackle. And my model was not to go to retail. I wanted to be able to find our manufacturer that was had made high quality stuff, imported into the US and Canada, and then directly deliver it to customers. Because um, retailers, you know, they take margins. The only thing we're dealing with right now is shipping is extremely expensive. It's gone up oh, double since when we started the company. Insane. But yeah, it's a very cool project that I've had a lot of fun working on, and I'm excited for another ice season that we're upon us. It's getting cold. Isn't we will do, be doing a podcast from the ice, what do you call it? Tent? Ice shack. Ice shack. <laughs> for I don't sure. ice fish in shacks a lot. Just I On the homestead. I want 100%. I, this is like a once, it might not freeze, but uh, Navy Pier freezes. And you can ice fish for. It's, do people do that? Is it sketchy? It's dangerous. It's sketchy. People think you're crazy. Yeah, but I'll I don't go out, do that. I'll go out there and make sure it's safe and make sure everything's good. Oh my good. gosh, Alex, you are super sketchy. What do you mean by that? Like you what? do things that terrify me. <laughs> I love to push. Stuff. You like to push boundaries. I do because it's fun and. That's good. Maybe you'll get me out of my comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. If it's legal. Okay. <laughs> Just like um, that, just like that smallmouth. Well, I feel like you caught a bigger smallmouth in the Lake Michigan video we made, but it didn't. For some reason, like it wasn't in the final edit. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, this is weird. Okay. <laughs> Sean's like, I have no idea what you're talking about yeah. right now. I thought you were talking about when we were up north in um, Michigan, and this girl's taking selfies, yeah. and her boyfriend's doing a great job. It looks like, um, good for him. Also, big news, guys. Um, I just got re-signed. Erica Nardini, our CEO, called me. Thank you so much, Erica and Dave. Got re-signed for another two years here at Barstool Sports. Woo, woo. I celebrated a little bit. It was a Monday. Pumped. Another two years. I'm pumping up. I, like, didn't doubt that I wasn't going to get re-signed, but, like, I was so nervous at the same time because this is, like, a dream job. Can't take it for granted. We've been grinding. And I can definitely tell the difference from when I first started to like six months in to a year to a year and a half, which we're at about a year and a half right now. You can sh just tell the difference and the like, success and like the failures. I'm just, it's so different from when we first started. And I'm so extremely excited because we have a lot of new things coming 
to Barstool Outdoors, including this podcast, which Alex and I have talked a lot about. Like, we really want to grind on the podcast and make this a regular thing, uh, probably a bi-weekly thing, which, which we're hoping for. Yeah, we're and, hoping for 24 episodes a year. Yeah, and it won't just be from a boat. Alex and I will go deer hunting. You have your setup already, yep. correct? I got a deer bow. Yeah, your bow. Wait, did you say that it's, like, styled in pretty good? Yeah. It's, have you been practicing? Yeah. It's okay. dialed in. It's way over the top. I spent way too much money on it, but I wanted a – it's my only, like, uh, self-defense mechanism I have because I don't have a gun or anything, so it's my bow. Oh, so, like, your bow is by your bed just in case yeah. somebody breaks in. Yeah, exactly. So you're screwed. Knocked in. Knock, knocked in. Oh, oh, like are, you knocked, knocked? are you knocked? Are you knocked up? Knocked in? I'm excited for deer season this year. I'm excited. A lot of people were asking if you were going to go deer hunting with me, so that's a yes for anybody watching. Hopefully on Halloween. Let's do it. That's the best day. We could do it. I feel like Halloween's always the best day of the year. I always see so many deer on Halloween. I've killed my past two big bucks. Ooh. Both. You got a fish? No. I lost them. I had a fish. I had a fish. Hold on. Hold on. So you got, are you guys gonna like uh, wear costumes when you're hunting on Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good idea, Sean. Whatever costume we do, we have to do the camouflage version of the costume. Okay, so comment below costume ideas because we will be hunting, bow hunting from the stand in our costumes. I killed, I killed my last two deer, Alex, on Thanksgiving Day. Yeah. Both. Wait, Thanksgiving Day? Thanksgiving Day. Last year I killed a deer on Thanksgiving, and the year before that I killed it on Thanksgiving. Isn't that gun season? Um, it's a Thursday, no. Oh, because Illinois is like weekends. It's weekends, yeah. I don't really pay attention to gun season because I don't hunt during gun season. You can hunt during gun season, though, if you want, Alex, and I can guide you. No, no. I want to kill one with a bow. That's Have you height. killed one with a bow yet? Yep. I've killed uh, does. No, no bucks. All right. Maybe this year Alex is gonna kill a buck. But will you? Do you think your reaction is gonna be similar to you missing a big bass if you miss a, bo a buck? I, I feel like it's gonna be hard for me to keep my composure together. I get really nervous and I start laughing. And oh well, that cannot happen. Do you think you'll shake? Yeah. Oh, for sure, I'm gonna shake. And I'm gonna. I will eat the heart for sure. I'll okay. eat it. I'll eat it right okay. away, raw. Uh, okay. I'll eat okay, the whole Jeffrey thing. Dahmer. I'll eat the. Whole <laughs> Okay, Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> Have you seen that series? It's yeah. so good. Wow, look at this view. Isn't this, this incredible? Is insane. This isn't so incredible. I haven't, um, I haven't really been down here very much. I guess like I go to the Barstool Bar, which is down here in River North. I don't know. Every single time I come down here, I think of touristy things. So like this is like the tourist spot, which is why everybody's looking at us like we are crazy people. And taking they're taking pictures of us. Look at all these tour buses. This is hilarious. I've never been on an architecture tour. But why would I go on an architecture tour? When we, yeah, when we got this tour. Yeah, this is a better tour. I'd rather do this. Also, I get, I have such bad ADHD. I'd be so bored. I couldn't do it. On the topic of you being re-signed, do you remember when you first got the job and like, were you nervous? What were your thoughts? Like, okay, yeah. So you brought it up earlier. Yeah. I like forgot that I even called you. It was such a long time ago. We've been just grinding too. It's like all I think about is work because I'm a workaholic. But when I first got hired or I guess offered the position, one, I was like over the moon and I was definitely excited. Like, yes, I want to work at Barstool Sports. But then also I was in my head like, is this a good move? Because I really didn't know. I, I didn't know how it was going to work. I didn't even know the concept behind me being hired and what I was going to do with the content. And Alex and I were talking that I did call Alex because Alex, because he is a young entrepreneur who did drop out of college and started making content and money himself. I didn't know if it was a good move or not, but looking back, I'm so happy I signed because Barstow literally lets me do whatever I want. And the opportunities are endless there. I'm able to pitch different ideas and have people listen to me and be like, okay, we will help you get this idea started or whatever it might be. And financially, like, it was a great, it was a great move. I was nervous, of course. Like, it's just a different. Fish. Oh, fish. Ooh. Alex, what the hell? I feel like I'm, I'm wasting my good spots. There's like three spots I know where fish live and I've lost the last two of them. But now I'm like so financially stable. Got a salary, great benefits, great coworkers, a great support system, which 
I am so happy I'm at Barstool. I would rather, I wouldn't, wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I am at the best place I could possibly ever want. It gets super lonely when you're creating content for yourself. Like that office, that office atmosphere and having coworkers is such a good thing for your mental health. It's such a good thing. And I can bounce off of my coworkers too. And like I, I pitch different ideas and it's not like anybody really shuts me down. Like they're willing to try with me. Like, like our out of office seg- series, for example, some of these content creators may not even do anything outdoors, may not even really enjoy, like the hunting or fishing aspect, but they are willing to try it just because like, I'm like, come on, try it, give it a shot, get them out of their comfort zone. And I don't know, it's just great. I have such a great support system and everybody's willing to help each other at Barstool. So like looking back, I was worried about being independent and not being able to have that freedom doing what I wanted. I can literally do whatever I want and I am independent. Even though I work for, I, even though I'm with the company, we're, I'm still independent. I'm able to do what I want. And uh, to some extent, they let me. Creative freedom is awesome. It's not like you're going to make something and then they're going to say, oh, no, you can't post that. Like, have you ever had them say, no, you can't post that? No, that's a good thing. And I actually had Feidelberg, which was so funny because Dave is such like an animal lover. Yeah. He's like, Sydney, you literally changed Dave. Like, before you came on, if you posted like even like for example he blogged a turtle getting eaten by an alligator and he said that dave was like you need to take that down right now (laughs) and so like dave lets me do whatever i want and nobody says like you shouldn't do that take that down no creative freedom independent great support system benefits are wonderful financial like and also people sometimes shit it's people who hate barstool they shit on barstool saying they hate women or whatever the hell they say that is so wrong like i am so comfortable in my job yeah. And I love my coworkers. I love my bosses. It's it's absurd. People just are jealous. Yeah, the internet's a weird place because it's you don't really you like you say something and you don't have to face the person. They either hate their lives or they're very jealous. And that's why people get attacked especially on Twitter. And I tell my other girlfriends, it's like don't read the comments or some people are saying like, "Oh my gosh, Sydney, like it's crazy how you don't let anything affect you with like the mean comments or whatever." Cause I really don't, it's just like another person. Like they're not gonna affect my job. That one comment or a hundred comments, whatever it might be, not affecting my job. Say mean things all you want, you know? We have no filter. But like that's how people wanna hear things nowadays. Like our world is so crazy right now. You say one thing that you don't even mean it in a bad way. They take, they turn it and they mess it around to be in a bad way, you know? So sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm nervous. I like how to word this, which I shouldn't be nervous at all because I don't mean it derogatory or in a horrible way. Oh, he caught something. Did he? Yeah. Go away. What's he got? A little guy. What's he got? What do you got? Right here. What do you got? Nice. That's not a bad. (laughs) Pit stop, bathroom break. Gas on a boat. (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> boats and hoes, boats and hoes. God give me Alex, some boats Sean and hoes. Alex, Sean, and Sydney, and we're live. We had a pee break and an IPA break. Feels so much better, yeah. literally. I feel like I couldn't think of this entire podcast because I had to pee so bad. So now you're just, your brain is moving now. Yeah. Also, I'm just like so stuffy that I'm like, oh, do I have snot running down my nose? So what That'd happened? So is it? Is it, um, what are those things called? Allergies? Yes. Yeah. I think I have a sinus infection though too. That was really funny. That guy was like, a bass. I'm like, that is not a bass, sir. That is not a bass. Yeah, that guy was definitely, you're doing a podcast on a boat? Can we mic you up real quick and can you say that one more time? (laughs) These guys on the shore were like, are you guys doing a podcast on a boat? That's so awesome. Yeah, well, thanks. We thought it was. You you said you saw another person doing a podcast on a boat? Okay, well... Or they weren't. Did they didn't have like an actual thing, but they were sitting there just having a conversation, and that was after we did one. So I was like, "I wonder where you got the idea." Mm. Not a bad one, I might say, but we are the OGs. I think it might that might have just coined it. Podcast on a boat. But the problem is, we're not gonna be on a boat. Yeah, the whole time. we're not gonna be about. We're gonna be in the tree stand in our costumes hunting deer. That would be ridiculous. Podcast on a boat featuring Alex and Sydney in a tree stand. <laughs> we're struggling right now with naming it. We, you guys had some amazing ideas in the last one, but we're just kind of like, we don't want to be stuck with podcasts on a boat because then we have to do them all on a boat. It needs to be kind of vague because Alex likes fishing. That's his niche. 
I love bow hunting. That's my niche. So we're going to just like intertwine the two. So we need something that's vague. That's anything outdoors. Because who knows? Maybe we'll be like skydiving one day. Doing a podcast from a plane. Let's do it. Easy. Bat. Wait, that was a good idea. Bet. Podcast in the sky. That would be awesome. We saw all your comments. So here are a couple of the name suggestions for the podcast. I think the podcast should be called Winners Win. <laughs> Sponsored by Lead. <laughs> Megalopod. Um, catching chaos. Catching chaos. I didn't think that was bad, but it's catching and it's kind of just yeah. Airwaves. I don't like that. Okay then. Do you like airwaves? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There was a bunch, but we read your comments. One, we love reading your comments. All four, 530 of them, and all the feedback was great. The questions are great, what you guys wanted us to talk about. I think our first one was just so good and just made me happy. And then the second one's going to be good, too. This is, like, a unique spot. Um, Nobody's done this one either. Nobody's done <laughs> this one either. So if you ever see another podcast like this, you know where it came from. We haven't seen each other for, like, three weeks, maybe, two weeks. Was it three weeks? It's been two a while. Yeah, yeah, we, you were, you've been traveling, so have I, because I was in Canada. Yeah. I haven't seen you since Canada. I was in Canada. So I killed a mule deer, which is really exciting. You killed a mule deer. You called me up and said, somehow your dad's cameraman deleted the footage. Okay. Yeah, okay. So here's the story. I haven't broke the news yet. Um, lost, the, lost the footage. Okay. Well, we thought that the cameraman deleted the footage. So technically formatted the, S, formatted the SD card and then just wiped it clean. We got a program to get the footage back. It wasn't there. So must, an SD card is missing, I think. I mean, once you delete the footage, I don't think there's a software where you can get it yeah, back. Yeah, there's a software, so everything was there. Yeah. So, for hey, how, breaking for, news! For how long, though? Again, anything that was ever created on the SD card, you can see. Like, there was an SD card that had, like, months back. Yeah. Did, From him, like, hunting in, like, uh, July. That's incredible yeah, to so, me. Yeah, so, good news for you, if you ever need it. But, yeah. so, yeah, I shot my mule deer. It was, like, really exciting. It was the last day. Um... Don't have the footage yet, but I mean, I'm not like counting it out. We're gonna still look. If not, we'll make a cool video out of it because there was still some good footage that we still have. Um, just on the kill, which is really sad. It's really depressing, actually. So let's just change the subject. You have been uh, <laughs> fishing your little heart out and you went to a musky uh, fishing tournament. Yes. Last weekend? I, I've two edited, weekends ago? I edited our video, like when we went to St. Clair. Never posted it. Like, I edited the whole thing. <laughs> and then I edited this musky tournament. Well, I didn't do good in the tournament, but I, like, caught some fish after. Yeah. I haven't posted it. Maybe I will. I need to post it. But anyways, yeah, on the way up, I stopped. My buddy was like, hey, I'm in central Wisconsin. Do you want to stop and fish with me? I'm like, sure. And I just, I had this section of river I really wanted to check out. I'm like, it could be a bust or whatever. We go there. First spot, 45 incher follows it. Okay. Second spot. You don't catch it? Don't catch what it. What happened? It just like, I don't even know what happened. I wasn't, it wasn't on my bait. Well, I know the depressing feeling of yeah. not catching it. It didn't catch. Okay. So then. That's a big muskie. The next spot I, I go to, it's like a log. It's like a very pronounced log down and like on a channel swing. So it's like a very unique spot. Like it's specific. I cast my, uh, like a big wooden 10 inch bait at it, at the stick. And this monster comes out. I like look at my friends. And they don't believe me. And I'm like, dude, that was a huge fish. Like, that was a that was a big muskie. Go to our next spot. My buddy catches a 42. Okay. We turn around on that fish. I have my friend who's never caught a muskie. Well, he's caught some little muskies. Never a big muskie. Okay. Throw a bucktail right at that laydown. Okay. Boom, 50-incher. That was the picture I sent you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. And I was like, I'm so jealous. Which, everybody loved our video. And, like, I just still have the itch. I need to catch a muskie. We yeah. have to go to, um, like. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, the one in Texas. A lot of big muskies in, in Texas. Texas. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll go to that lake, though, definitely for the, the years over. I don't even know when muskie season ends. When does um, it end? It ends first week in December. Okay. Oh, so we have plenty of time. Yeah. I would like to go before it's freezing, though. And I'm There's gonna a be lake deer by you, though, in Illinois that's open all year round that has muskie. Okay, well, let's go. What the heck? Yeah. We could go there. We could go there, and then we could go deer hunting. We got some big ass deer this year. I'm really excited. Really? Yeah. And there's like a property because my, my dad and I and my family were very particular with who gets to hunt on like a certain piece of property because that's where our big bucks live too. 
So that's, like that, where, that's where I'm going to hunt? No. So <laughs> so you can't hunt there. Nobody can hunt there unless you're blood related. So I'm sorry. Um, but we have another piece of property where it's our, it's our lease. So we have two leases where we also hunt. We had a, my biggest deer that on trail cam is at the lease where our friends can hunt because there's so many different deer coming in and out because there's this other piece of property that's private and it's like so it's like a sanctuary pretty much so you don't even know what kind of deer are in there and they trail from there to our property so there's like food plots that they come and eat and everything so you never know what deer are going to show up which is why we let our friends our close friends like you would be coming to hunt and i would probably film you and uh you might kill a big buck that's where i was after my biggest buck mr perfect if you follow along on my hunting adventures on social media mr perfect was a deer that i was after for like three years and that's where he lived so i just went on a rant and you about got deer him last hunting. year right no so oh. i i killed six pack six pack and yeah. he was on our like family farm where we watched him for like nine years i killed six pack which my dad was after him okay killed him on thanksgiving with my dad on the tree and my dad killed mr perfect which was a deer that i was after which we didn't care that we flip-flopped but that's cool. It was kind of weird that it was the deer that I was after he killed and vice versa. Both big deer. I mean, Mr. Perfect was a, uh, was uh, kind of declining when he killed them, which kind of sucked, but still a big deer. Yeah. A deer is like, when I say they're declining, is they have like a peak year where that's the biggest they're going to ever be. And then the older they get, they kind of decline. So they kind of lose their mass or their nest's not as big and they can be like spindly. So you, whenever you see a deer, they're like, okay, that's a giant. That's probably a nice five, six, seven year old, typically around that age, maybe eight. In my case, six pack was a nine year old deer, which I don't know how he didn't decline by that point. I got lucky, but usually around like maybe six, seven, eight, six, seven, that's where they're on their like their prime so we'll let a four-year-old walk unless he's like an absolute monster and he's smart and we don't think we're ever going to kill him or we don't we won't ever see him especially if he's on our lease but yeah i don't know if that made sense but M made total sense i'm excited to see some deer have you ever done any spot and stocks on your land or has it been all yeah so i shot yeah. a 10 point buck uh spot and stocking when he was like bedded down it was a really rainy day so if it's a really rainy windy day or like thundering we will spot and stock um, another piece of our property. We have like our lease, our other lease that we'll spot and stock. Cool. So yeah, there's a lot of different properties that we're like, okay, you can only hunt this way or there's another property we can hunt this way. But yeah, spot and stocking is my favorite. All right, before we wrap up, let's go ahead and just read these comments together. I know we've read them individually, yeah. but together about our last podcast, I think it's kind of funny. Michael Foster, this actually might be my friend. Get AP on your turf to do some hunting. Season is right around the corner. Love to see AP do a little hunting of any kind. We will be doing hunting. We will be doing hunting, Michael. Somebody's hating on you on this one. Why well, I don't know if it's much hate. Okay, read it. Andres, Andres Gonzalez. I want to say that wrong, sorry. I feel like Perrick is lost and can't really find a personality for himself that fits him. He was a surfer, skateboarder, traveler, etc. He's trying to find himself and it's taking a lot longer than expected. Hope things get better for you, buddy, with a heart. I don't think that was negative. Uh, okay, well, I don't know. Are you lost? Do you feel like you're lost? Yeah. For sure. I, I mean, I don't know if lost. Yeah, lost. Should we dive deeper into, like, that situation in your life? Yeah. Shoot, wow. <laughs> I'm going to start crying. <laughs> We're going to get deep I'm now. Gonna... Andres, Alex, love that comment. I, I like that comment, and I'm going to just read something that I... I felt like this, I, I like this this tweet on uh, September 26th. Reading too much philosophy creates the depressing, depressing illusion that you can and should figure out your life before you live it. And okay. I feel like I'm just living right now. I'm in my 20s. I want to figure out what I'm good at, what I like. Obviously, I enjoy fishing. I love being outdoors. But do I love surfing? Do I love skateboarding? Do I love hosting podcasts with you? Do I love making fishing lures? Like... I don't want to limit myself right now. I want to explore all of my options and then really dial it in as I, you know, figure it out. Like, I Yeah, I don't think you're lost. Yeah. I don't think you're lost. I think you're just getting your hands in a lot of different jars, and that's perfectly fine. I am in the opposite where I feel like I wish that my hands were in a little bit more th things, especially with my entrepreneurial mind. Like, I want to be involved in other things, so, like, I'm the reversed um, I feel like perspective you're, of you. you're I doing mean, pretty well, too. Well, yeah. I mean, I do, I do a lot of things, but 
I don't like sitting down. So like that's a good thing that you're doing different things and having different hobbies that are outside of fishing. Because sometimes I wish that I had more hobbies than hunting and fishing, which and work. I feel like work's <laughs> just like I'm always working. Yeah. Which is why I picked up golf. I like golf, but I want to pick up other hobbies besides what I do for work. For sure. So I think it's a good thing. Yeah. So maybe doing. I'm not lost. I'm just figuring it out. And I'm living life. I'm living life. I definitely love fishing. I know there's been some videos on the internet where I'm like, I can't fish anymore. This is just destroying my life like it's the worst thing ever and then i'm just like no i love it like i truly do love it well you love it now that you've like taken a step back yeah and i can just do it for fun yeah yeah (laughs) and like okay so my dad he's like you know my dad like he grinds he works he's a workaholic which i was in canada and this made me feel really good for him to say but i was not i hadn't killed a mule deer i was getting really frustrated i was like okay i need this for footage too like I need a video out of this. And he's like, don't lose sight of what you're doing. Like, you're here to have fun. If you don't get, if you don't get a video, you don't get a video. Like, have fun with it. Don't make it ruin your perspective on what we're doing. And I was like, you're right. I'm going to relax a little bit. Yep. I've definitely um, ruined some trips because I was overstressed about the videos and should have just enjoyed the time. I've yeah, had. like the musky trip, for example. I think that was one trip that I was really just genuinely like relaxed like, I was like if we make a video out of this we make a video out of this if not if we're not like I just want to go out here and try something new and have fun with it and I had a great time I feel like if I was so stressed and worried to catch a muskie and missing those two muskies I would have been a lot more mad and a lot more upset going home yeah but and yeah. now you want to go back out and now you've got that urge to musky fish and it's it's a good thing yeah I also like the, the big thing with I don't know if you ever felt this way, but now like taking a step back too, is like making videos that you might not have to land a fish or not not have to big shoot a big deer, like making videos out of even the fails. Oh, is that us? Is that nope. for us? No. Nope. But as this job's gone on, I've been like, okay, I can actually make videos out of anything. I don't have to like kill a big buck. I don't know. I need a solid editor, Sean, and somebody to push me to be like, it's okay if there's nothing, like outdoorsy in this people just want to see what you're doing which i gradually had to learn that this is okay i was thinking about this today like there's so many things that i'm like sean you need to edit this out like some people might see this and be like oh that's bad and i'm gradually being like oh like we can let some things into the video yeah yeah like, like my my arrow groupings i'm like oh that was a shitty groupie let's let's make it let's do another one and i'm like i don't care now what you guys see how amazing is this view behind us <laughs> this is sweet. This was a good podcast. This was about um, we've been out, we've only been out here for like what two hours? Yeah, I feel like we got a lot of content. Yeah, this was good. We had a great pod, pod number two for Alex and I on the Chicago River. I think we we're talking that the next podcast will probably be down at the farm at the Wells Farm, hunting a little bit, fishing a little bit, and having our first guest, Mister Slockmaster Tim Wells. I think that is going to be the greatest first guest a podcast could ever have. So I'm excited for that. And uh, stay tuned, guys, because this is not the end. This This is just the beginning. (laughs) This is just the beginning. Also, comment below on who you'd want to see us bring onto the podcast. So any guests, celebrities, normal human beings, drop them below. And thanks for watching this podcast with Alex and Sydney. We'll see you next time. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, you know what people say to me sometimes in the in the comments that hurt my feelings? What? Well, they don't really hurt my feelings. I'm just like, oh. They're like, how much testosterone does she have in her body? <laughs> yeah. Her voice is so deep. They're like, yeah, this is great. This is awesome. Till next time. <laughs>